Disciple Up number 144, Death with Dignity. This is Disciple Up, the Disciple Empowering Podcast, where psychology, science, the real world, sin, self, and culture meet head on, and scripture rules. If you're a follower of Christ looking to grow or looking for some biblical answers, then get ready because it's time to Disciple Up. Hey, everybody, this is Disciple Up. My name's Louie. Thanks for tuning in and uh, listening to us today for downloading, I guess I should say, and checking us out. Um, I am uh, the host of the show, and as you know, if you've been listening, this is the Disciple Empowering Podcast. If you have never listened, well, then I'm very happy to have you here with us. And uh, today we're going to talk about a tough subject. Uh, hopefully this doesn't kill all my downloads, this title, but I think it's something that we need to talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is death with dignity. Death is one of those topics. Obviously, it's not something a lot of people want to talk about. But this phrase, death with dignity, um, intrigues me, and I want to look at it and just think about it from a biblical perspective today. And you'll have to forgive me, things have been really hectic the last couple of days, so uh, I'm kind of coming at this at the last minute. Hopefully the content won't suffer because of that. By the way, if you would like to get a hold of us, before we jump into the topic, uh, if you want to get a hold of me uh, with any ideas, suggestions, I would love some suggestions, questions you have, topics you'd like to hear discussed. You can do so two ways. Just email me, louie, L-O-U-I-E, at discipleup.org. Or you can go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash discipleup. If you have Facebook, of course, leave a comment there. So I've been in the ministry quite a while. And over the course of my ministry, of course, I've seen more than a few people die, obviously. And I remember years ago when I was ministering here in Parker on my first tour of duty, as I called it. I've been here twice. I was here, then I left, then I got fired. Then I was uh, unemployed, kind of homeless, uh, living off my sisters, and then I came back out here. Yeah, it was quite a ride. Uh, but in that first tour of duty, I had a, someone led him to Christ, baptized him, and uh, kind of fell away and got involved in other things, and then um, found out he had cancer. And it didn't take long for it to really, um, really mess him up. And finally, they transferred him to a hospice facility in Western Phoenix. And I remember I went to see him one day. I drove over there, found the place. This was before smartphones and uh, GPS. and uh, <clears throat> But I found it. And uh, I, I went in to see him. And that visit really caused me to begin to ponder and think about the term death with dignity. Now, I, just to start off, because I know that phrase is attached, I think, at least in my mind, and I think many others with hospice. I want to make it very clear that hospice workers are great. The ones that worked with him were great. The place was clean, very nice. And uh, it had everything that someone who's terminal would need. I've had several people in my church do hospice work uh, in the past and even today, and I admire them very much. They do something that most people, uh, including myself in some ways, really don't want to do and probably wouldn't be very good at it. And hospice was absolutely invaluable to my family during my father's death and my mother's passing as well. And here uh, in the ministry of the church, they've also been amazing with several people who we've had pass as well. So I say God bless them uh, for providing this service, which is needed, especially uh, as the population ages here in the uh, county. I live in La Paz County. We have uh, we are one of the oldest counties in the country, not like historical, but in terms of of uh, average age. We go back and forth with the county in Florida, for which is the oldest medium age county. And so their, their uh, hospices services are just absolutely critical. So I, I went into the facility in Phoenix, and what struck me as I watched my friend lying there, obviously in the very last stages of life, he, he was never conscious that I was there. 
was a phrase that, that I've heard a lot in the last several years and many before that, and that was the phrase, death with dignity. It's a phrase that sounds good. But in that moment, I felt as though I was seeing through it and seeing that perhaps it's not all that we might want it to be. Um, it It just really impacted me because I didn't see any dignity in that room or the other rooms I passed that day. I saw someone lying there who was emaciated from the cancer, of course, alone. It just struck me as very sad. He was slowly passing away his final hours on this earth. He wasn't aware I was there. Uh, He wasn't probably aware of much of anything. He was obviously sedated, drugged up pretty heavily because of the cancer and the pain that that involves. And uh, he just slowly, you know, slept and whatever and just eventually just passed over. And I've seen that happen many times. In fact, just uh, a month ago or so, we had a lady in our church here die pretty much the same way. She wasn't in a hospice facility. She was at home, but it was the same routine. Now, in spite of the fact that I was pretty sure he didn't know I was there, I did talk with him. I touched him. I read scripture to him. And I prayed for him. But in all of that, I didn't really see any dignity. That And I, the weekend that followed that, I thought about it a lot. I mean, it was just like on my mind constantly. And of course, I've thought about it a lot since then. You hear the term death with dignity used a lot from people who approach life from what I believe is a non-biblical perspective. They tell us that death is just a part of life. It's a natural close to the cycle of life that we're all part of and therefore is beautiful when it can be done peacefully and without much pain or discomfort. And I know many, many Christians who buy into that. I mean, it sounds good and it it sounds noble. It's kind of uh, poetic, really, in a sense, I think. The whole idea of the circle of life and all that stuff. And, And it can be comforting if you accept the premise of the statement that death is a natural part of life. But see, this is where my problem comes in because I don't accept that premise and neither does the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22 through 26. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ, the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Hmm. Paul tells us here that while death became the order of the day after Adam and Eve fell, and it obviously certainly has, the death rate is still one per person, as the late great Dr. Walter Martin used to like to say. It wasn't intended to be that way from the beginning. And that's why I believe all human cultures rebelled against death. They all have, historically and otherwise. They either fear it or they try to deny it. All have all cultures all over the earth have some form of belief in an afterlife. And I believe this is true because human beings were not made to die, but to live forever with their maker. And so death strikes us as just wrong. It's alien. It's it's just something deep down inside of every human being just rebels against it and pushes back on it. Because in fact, that was not the original plan of God. But of course, the fall got in the way. God also shows us that death is an enemy. It's not a friend. It's not a natural end of the life cycle. And therefore, a wonderful and beautiful thing. No, that's not what death is. And we know that because when you look at things like, let's just take the uh, almost stereotypical example nowadays. Let's take the Holocaust. I'm recording this. I think this is Holocaust Remembrance Day or it might be the day after. I'm sorry. I should know that and I don't. But it's um, 
a horrible thing. Well, why was it so horrible? Well, because they were killing people. Death just walked all over Europe through the Nazi regime. And millions of Jews and other peoples as well, gypsies and Jehovah's Witnesses and Christians and Catholics and and uh, just anybody that got in the way died. And most of those people died horribly. And we are deeply offended by that and we we push back against it. That's evil. Well, if that's evil, then maybe the reason it's evil is not just because these people were killed unjustly. That's, that is an evil, obviously. But also because death itself just isn't right. It just doesn't feel right. It's evil. Death is destructive. Death is painful and was not part of God's plan for the ages as originally set up before he gave Adam and Eve free choice to do whatever they wanted. And we all know what happened since. This is why in the end, death will be destroyed. It's such a great enemy of God that it will be the last one to fall before him, but it will fall. And that's the nature, the message, I'm sorry, of scripture. That death is unnatural. That death is the result of sin entering the world. That death changed the world that we live in, the entire universe actually, warped it and twisted it away from God. And God's whole plan of redemption is to not just like save your soul or let you and me go to heaven, that's part of it, but ultimately it's to bring everything back to the way it should be. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 to 57. This is the American Standard Version. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I read that from the ASV because that's a very literal translation there, and I just wanted you to to sort of get a feel that this is exactly what God is saying here. Death is the enemy. The ultimate aim for mankind in God's heart is for us to put on immortality. That's what he wants. And so death will be swallowed up in victory. In fact, it's already happening because when Jesus rose from the dead— What did he say? He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He holds the keys to death and hell, which, uh, or death and Hades, which is the abode of the dead, which is another way of saying he has power over that. So Jesus already has power over life and death, but that power will come to its completion when the Lord returns and judgment falls. And at that moment, the victory of, of God's plan, which men and women revile all the time. People are always angry. If there's a good God, why is there evil and blah, blah, blah. And we've discussed this on uh, past podcasts. Well, you want proof that God's right and that, and that our way of looking at these things is wrong? Just wait around. You'll get it. In the end, death will be swallowed up in victory. Now, here's the message paraphrase of Romans chapter 5, verse 12. You see, sin and death both came into the world at the same time as part of God's curse upon mankind and the universe we live in after the fall. You know the story of how Adam and Eve landed us in the dilemma we're in. First sin, then death. I'm sorry, I totally messed that up. I got I to gotta apologize for that. That first part I read is not from the message. Here's the message paraphrase. I'm sorry. I working off of an old script here. It's not a script. It's just some stuff I've written down for show notes, which are available, by the way, at discipleup.org, and I didn't mark this clearly. Here's Romans 5 to open the message. You know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we're in, first sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. So sin and death did both come into the world at the same time as a part of God's purse, a curse on the world and on mankind and on the whole universe. But now God wants to bring everything back. And so 
the redemption Jesus died on the cross to bring us, and this whole story of what's happening will in the end lead up to a new heavens and a new earth, which will be what? Restored to the way God originally wanted them to be. So you have to look at death in the context of all of this because it's what derailed things. And now God is going to fix that ultimately in the end. Romans 6.23 NIV says, So sin and death are partners in this fallen world we live in as we... Gosh, I'm doing this again. I didn't put quotes on here. Ah, that was so dumb of me. Okay, here's let me try this again. I'm sorry. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, God has overcome both these twin evils. Notice how sin and death are mentioned together over and over again in the Bible, in the New Testament. That's not an accident. That's not just a coincidence. That's deliberate because in biblical theology, they go together. Sin came first. It caused death. Remember what death means. It means separation from God. When someone dies here in your life, you are then separated from them, right? You Well, you can talk to them, but they're not going to answer you. And you can go to do a seance and the thingy, and it's still not them talking to you. So you are separated. That's what death is. And so death is not what God had in mind, but it came as a result of Adam and Eve willingly separating themselves from God by saying, oh, you told us we can't do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to know right from wrong. Apart from you, God, we're going to be like you, God. And God said, oh, you think so? Didn't work out so well for them. Hasn't worked out so well for us. So God has overcome both these twin evils through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ from the grave. It's in him and through him that we find the victory we need over these two things. So then, the Christian approach to physical death is that we're only temporarily submitting to a remnant of the fall. For we shall rise again and live again just as our Lord Jesus has already done. Christians don't deny the reality of death. That would be pretty silly. But what we do say is, Jesus died, he rose, and he promised that he would come back, and if we're dead when he returns, to bring us up out of our graves as well. And so our hope and our whole approach to life and death is anchored in the life and death of Jesus. And Jesus goes even further than that in John's gospel. When he tells us that in in a real sense, in a real sense, remembering what death is, believers cannot die at all. Say, well, wait, you just said we do. Well, well, yes, but think about this. John chapter 6, verses 50 and 51. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. This is obviously Jesus speaking. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. To eat the living bread means to accept Christ into our lives and become united with him. Now, we're united in Christ in in two ways. Number one, by believing in his death, That's the sacrifice of his flesh and his burial and resurrection. And two, by devoting ourselves each day to living as he requires, depending on his teachings for guidance and trusting in the Holy Spirit for the power to live that way. Just as the Jews depended on bread for daily strength and relished it as a main part of their diet, so we should depend on and desire the living Christ in our daily lives. And that was a quote from Life Application Concise New Testament Commentary. I liked it so much, I just threw it in there verbatim because I think that's really good, it's accurate, and it's uh, very succinct. kind of brings things to a point. Since the, the word death's basic meaning in Greek is separation, like I said before, you can begin to understand that we cannot actually die in Christ. You say, why? Well, because 
Yeah, I'm, hold on here. I've got a, there we go. Little technical problem. We can't die in Christ because nothing can separate us from him. And in him, we're spiritually linked to all believers living and dead. So in a very real sense, believers don't die. Yeah, their bodies die, but they're never separated from Christ. And now, of course, I want to read to you that famous passage in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? For as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, as many times as as you read that passage, and of course there's more there we're not reading, but it's just like, wow, such an amazing thing. Such an amazing, uh, not just the way it's written, that's pretty amazing. But just the contents just like smacks you right upside the head. Wow. So in Christ, death is conquered once and for all. He lived, he died, he rose again, he has conquered death. Even though our bodies will die, short of the Lord's return, of course, we do not and cannot die in a spiritual sense because of Christ's life in us. Through his life and the Holy Spirit, we are linked together together as one body in Christ. So, death with dignity? Well, let us let me talk about that for a minute because um, that's where we got started and we kind of got off track, but not really because I wanted to give you um, this kind of overview before discussing this a little bit, just kind of off the cuff. I'm not sure. I guess it depends on how you define dignity. Now, certainly, nobody wants anybody to be in pain. Nobody wants people to die in pain. I've watched people die in pain, and it's not pleasant at all. It's pretty horrible. So, of course, keep this in mind with what I'm about to say. Uh, I'm not saying that's what should happen. I mean, that you would have to be a fool a thousand times over to think that way. But I am saying that um, I I don't know that the way we do things is dignified or not. I don't think it is. I don't. It doesn't feel to me like it is. Um, and I, I I I will have no control over this naturally. More than likely, I will have no control over it. But I don't want to die that way myself. Because I just don't see lying there, not being aware of what's going on, people standing around, talking about you or whatever they're talking about. And by the way, if you haven't been to many funerals, I I remember when I first started going to funerals as a pastor, I was amazed at the stuff people talk about. I always thought as a kid, you know, well. People are going to talk about their departed loved one, blah, blah, blah. Well, they do, but that's not all they talk about. They talk about everything under the world you can think of, including, (laughs) you know, uh, sports and what's going on and some jerk that they have to work with and blah, blah, blah. So it's, um, (laughs) it's pretty interesting to listen to what people talk about at funeral services. But anyway... I just don't see that as real dignified. So the question is, maybe another question, a better question to to ask is, do we really need to be dignified when we die? I mean, is that really important? As a Christian, do I, do I mind sacrificing my dignity? Well, no. As a Christian, I'm called to serve. 
I'm called to uh, sacrifice. I'm called to do whatever it is that uh, that I need to do. And as a Christian, I should be, if that means I have to lose some dignity, that's fine. I'm not going to stand on, oh, that's how undignified. I won't do that. No, of course not. That's not biblical. And we don't want to be that way. When it comes to dying, though, um, I'm just not sure that if we've got it right or not. I don't know. It's it's a very personal thing, I understand. And I'm sure some of you are totally fine with what uh, with the way that people die nowadays, and that's great. But I, I guess I'm just not. So I don't know if I'm just being a pain in the neck um, or if I'm actually – if I actually have a good point here, I can't really decide. <laughs> um, so it's um, it's something, I guess, that we need to think about and try and figure out that uh, whether we really need dignity when we die or not. I'm not sure, but I think that dying kind of quickly not long and drawn out on your own terms might be a better way to go. I suppose I'll find out. Sadly, when I do, it will be too late to tell you here on this podcast. <laughs> so, um, you know, what can I do? Can't do much about that either. So that's death with dignity. I just wanted to kind of throw out some thoughts on it. Um, Without really making conclusions, I know that generally speaking, when you do things like this, you want to have some kind of conclusion for people. But you know what? I, I also really believe that um, sometimes it's really good to just leave people with some questions and let them wrestle with it. The uh, the The material we're using in our small group studies for our spiritual growth campaign, which we're going through right now. I'm recording this on January 27th, 2020. Uh, it's called Alpha, and it deliberately leaves people with a lot of questions. It gives answers, but it also leaves you with questions. And um, that's, I think, a good thing. I think that um, we need to wrestle with questions and not always just find Pat simple, easy answers. And so, you know, I could ramble on here for ages about all kinds of things, uh, things about ho uh, uh, death and all of that, but I think maybe it's better for you if I don't, if I just let you wrestle with some of this stuff and try to see what you think Scripture has to say about it and try and figure it out. And if you come up with any thoughts... Let me know. I would, you know, love to uh, hear from that, and I'd love to look into um, talking maybe about this further when we've all of us have had more time to think about it. For today, I just think it it's um, it's something that deserves to be thought about and wrestled with, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, it will lead us to being maybe a little more comfortable about our impending death because, you know, death is coming for all of us. And uh, that's for sure. So think about it. What does it mean? What does it mean to die with dignity? And is that important to you? How should a Christian die? Someone told me recently we had a, a man very close to death who Praise God's doing so much better now. But uh, one of his daughters said to me, you know, that, that he had said to them he wanted to die well, which I immediately agreed with and resonated with because I've said that a lot. And that's part of the reason I don't like this way of going out because I'm not sure this really fits in with that. But like I said, then again, most people don't have a choice over how they die. Some do, most don't, or when or how or anything else. But what does it mean to die well as a Christian? Well, obviously it means I'm going to hold on to my faith in Christ. I'm going to uh, stand firm as a believer. I'm going to try to be a good example in 
when I die so that people can see the truth of the gospel in me, who knows? Maybe someone will be uh, impressed enough by that to look into it. Maybe someone will come to Christ. I've seen it happen. We had a, uh, a youth group sponsor back when I was in high school. Yes, ages ago. And tragically, one year, his um, one of his children died young, his son. And this happened when a bunch of the... Uh, I, I may have not been in the youth group then. I may have been out. I don't remember for sure. I may have been out of the group then. and I'm not sure. Or maybe I just wasn't at this conference. But they were away at a conference. And when the news came, he was there at the conference. It was a total shock to everyone. But the amazing thing was that he did talk a little bit about his son because his son was young, very young, but a believer and loved Jesus. And he shared the story of that and his death and his faith and how he still believed in Jesus, even though his son had died young and tragically and all that. And they had a number of kids come forward and give their life to Christ that night. The interesting thing was it's the same number of kids was the exact number of the age of his son. Wow. That's like... <laughs> That's pretty good. That's dying well. If you can bring as many people to Christ as years you've lived, you're certainly far above what most of us ever do. So that's what I mean about not being in control. Obviously, his son had no control over what was going to be said about him by other people at places and times, and who knows how that will all work out. But we do want to face our death well as a Christian. I I heard this and I might as well share it with you now, on a uh, video I was watching. Arthur Barcloth, 107 years old when he died. He was one of the last living World War I vets in the United Kingdom. He served in World War I. He went over the top six times. Over the top means... You know, you're jumping up out of your trench. You're going to run across no man's land while shells are falling and big shell holes everywhere. Machine guns are spitting out their lead and all these things are happening. And if you've ever seen any films or you know anything about World War One, you know it was pretty bad. In English Army, when you went over the top, you had 50-50 odds of being killed or wounded. Think about that. 50-50. If I said to you, Hey, I want you to come over here and uh, do this thing. Uh, of course, you, you might die or be wounded. You got a 50% chance of that. But hey, hey, good news. You've got a 50% chance of being okay. What would you do? Well, they asked him, hey, you know, how how did you deal with this? How did you do this? Especially, you know, like the fifth and sixth times when you've been through this so many times. And he said what he did was he said a little prayer to God. And his prayer wasn't, God, please spare my life. God, help me to survive this. God, you know, blah, blah, blah. Those kind of things that I think a lot of us would pray. I probably would. Instead, he said to God, God, help me behave like a man. Wow. Now, if he had leaped out of that trench and gone forward and died, I would say there's a man who died well. He behaved like a man. So I would consider that dignified. I don't know about you. I would. I considered the way the apostles died in pain and agony. Most of them were martyred, of course. Jesus was crucified. He was stripped. All he had on was a little loincloth. Then you might look at that and people were watching. Big crowd of people. You, I, I, I suppose you could look at that and say, well, that's, that's, you know, that was, there was no dignity there, but I think I disagree because I don't think dignity comes from your circumstances. Dignity comes out of you. So if you end up in pig slop doing something, you can do that and be dignified. However, you can also be dressed to the nines in the best of company with the richest people and all the fancy things and still be an undignified slob. So when it comes to dying with dignity, I don't think that so much has anything to do with your surroundings. I think it has a whole lot to do with your heart and your soul and whether you're really living out your faith. And here's the irony, right? Living out my faith, 
means I'm going to seek to die well. Because even as I'm dying, if I'm conscious, if I'm aware, then I am called upon to follow Christ even as I die. Because the whole goal of the Christian life, I think, in, in some ways, is to, to be like Jesus, to serve the Lord as best I can, and to live for Jesus until I die. And so even in the last seconds, even with the last breath, even your terminal breath, you breathe for Jesus, you live for Jesus, and ultimately you die for Jesus. And if you can do that, that's death with dignity. I don't care what your surroundings are. There have been a lot of Christians that have died in horrible circumstances. I just, last week we talked about persecution. I read a story this week of a pastor who was uh, martyred by the uh, terrorist group Boko Haram. Uh, he was shot. He had been held prisoner for a long time. I'm sure he wasn't treated with dignity. I'm sure he may not have looked very dignified. But I'll bet you he died with all the dignity that the Holy Spirit could give him. And now he's with his Lord because he lived and died for Jesus Christ. And that, to me, is death with dignity. And that's going to wrap it up. We're going to do a little shorter podcast this week because, uh, you know, the thing about podcasting is say what you got to say and then stop talking. So I'm going to stop. As soon as I tell you <laughs> that I'd love to hear from you, please get in touch. Uh, you can email me, louie, L-O-U-I-E, at discipleup.org. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash discipleup. Uh, if you go to discipleup.org, I hope you'll visit the website. There's links to my books. There's uh, links to video lessons on the life of Abraham, other video stuff, um, all kinds of other things there that's free. The only thing you're going to cost you anything is if you decide to buy one of my books, which you can. The one on the Holy Spirit's available. Uh, Getting Real is available. There's also, I don't know if I have a link on discipleup.org or not for this, but my latest book, it's a devotional for a spiritual growth campaign. It's called Hashtag for Parker. Just go to Amazon.com in their search bar type, type in Hashtag for Parker, one word, and it'll pop right up. So that's going to do it for this time. Uh, thanks so much for being out there and listening. We've had a great January so far. Let's keep it going. So please keep sharing this with your friends, your enemies, your in-laws, your outlaws, your neighbors on social media if you can. And until next time, God bless every single one of you. And remember, Every time is a good time to disciple up. So long. Disciple Up, the Empowering Disciples podcast, is written, produced, directed, in as much as there's any direction to this thing all, edited every once in a while, and paid for by Louis. It's his personal ministry, and it's not connected to Christ Church on the River. CCR does not sponsor, pay for, or necessarily approve the content found therein. The theme music for Disciple Up is Hot Wheels by Varensky. Yes, Louis actually paid for the rights to this very cool piece of music, so don't worry, and please call off the lawyers, as he's busy enough without having to deal with all that. All opinions expressed during Disciple Up are Louis and Louis alone. They do not necessarily represent those of our sponsor, the Lord Jesus Christ. However, where the opinions, thoughts, impressions, and feelings shared are in line with God's Word, and faithfully represent what our Lord says in His Holy Word, the Bible, then they are representative of our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. If you're wondering how the heck you're supposed to know this, remember, God tells you to test all things. Hold on to the truth. It's up to you to do the due diligence that God commands, so do it. Don't whine about it, and don't complain about how hard it is. Don't blame me for it. Disciple up, and do what you know you're supposed to do. If you'd like to know more about Louis or Disciple Up, please go to discipleup.org and check out everything you find there. Or not, it's completely up to you. Disciple Up, the Empowering Disciples podcast will, God willing, publish an episode every week covering different areas of concern to disciples of Jesus. If that's important to you, then please subscribe on iTunes, Google, Stitcher, or another one of the many podcast aggregators available to you. If it's not, then don't. If you'd like to get in touch, please email Louis at louis at discipleup.org. God bless you.